Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. MRD, or minimal residual disease, is commonly detected in CLL using four color flow cytometry. It's not yet a clinically standardized test, although we do have quite a bit of data in the setting of chemoimmunotherapy that those patients who become negative for any residual detectable disease, i.e. MRD negative, have longer progression-free and overall survival compared to those who are not MRD negative. And this is true for FCR in particular, where it's been studied at great length. In the common setting of clinical practice, it has prognostic value, but would not change my approach to treating the patients. Although we know that being MRD negative after FCR is associated with a better outcome, we do not know that applying more treatment in an effort to achieve MRD negativity is associated with better outcome. For example, it may just be a marker of better overall disease risk that a patient is able to become MRD negative. And chasing them, those who don't, with more therapy may not necessarily help. We really need randomized trials to better address that question. In the setting of the novel inhibitors, the B-cell receptor pathway inhibitors, most patients do not achieve complete remission. Most still have macroscopic disease. And therefore, the value of MRD in the setting of those drugs has been appropriately questioned. However, it's likely that if we can combine those drugs with other drugs that result in deeper remissions, this might allow us to do time-delimited therapy and give patients breaks from therapy, which is something highly desired by the patients and would also be beneficial for the healthcare system. It might also be beneficial for the patients in this case that they relapse. If they relapse not on drug, they won't necessarily be resistant. Whereas if you relapse while you're still on the drug, ongoing, you will certainly be resistant. There is a challenge in how we incorporate minimal residual disease in our practice as in order to do this technique, you need uh, sophisticated uh, protocols by flow cytometry where you combine at least six to eight colors. And in the US, this is a quite um, different technologies and, and too many commercial labs that may do uh, this in a different ways. However, I think that the more uh, data that we have, uh, we understand that these things are maybe important. Of course, this is applicable to chemoimmunotherapy for now. Uh, the new technologies, we know that some of these um, second generation monoclonal antibodies may obtain um, relatively low amount of MRD negativity, but the hope is that the new combination with the, all the drugs that are coming up to the world of CLL um, will really reach and will hopefully obtain higher rates of MRD, <coughs> for which will be a nice marker to stop therapy and see how patient evolves after and see how long they stay with no need for therapy. Right now we're not recommending patients to receive treatment until they're MRD negative. If they're being treated in the community with FCR or with chlorambucil plus a CD20 antibody. Now the one caveat I will make is based on data that we have published from Anderson where we looked at patients who received FCR, they were intended to receive six cycles, but we evaluated after three cycles for MRD status in the bone marrow by four color flow cytometry. And what we showed was that if patients were MRD negative at the end of three cycles and they stopped treatment, they did no better or no worse than if patients were MRD negative at the end of three cycles and got three more cycles of chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So if a patient achieves MRD negative remission after three cycles of FCR, I will do a CAT scan to make sure they don't have any enlarged lymph nodes and I will stop their therapy at that point rather than try to give them more chemotherapy 